It's Kenny Thacker. Welcome to 24-7 Differenter. I'm pleased to announce I have my great friend here, producer, writer, director, professor, Mr. P. Chapman. How you doing today, brother? Good to, good. Good good. to see you I'm back good. in the I'm building. Good. good to see you back in the building, I'm period. I'm glad to be back, man, with the surfboard table. Oh, well, you know you know how we do it. You know, you got to keep it funky. <laughs> you got to keep it different, pretty much. So for those that don't know who you are, can you tell them who you are and what you do? All right. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm multi-hyphenated. So I'm a, I guess first and foremost, I'm, I'm a director. Okay. Um, I'm a writer, so I can have things to direct. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a producer, so I can make the things I've written for myself to direct. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, I'm, a, I'm a strategist, man. I mean, a lot of the work that I've done is, has started from, you know, it starts from a laptop and then you have to get out to the world, mm -hmm. you got to raise the money, yeah. or you've got to, uh, you know, find the clientele, find mm -hmm. people to believe in you as someone who can direct for them as a business or a brand. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I guess it all kind of comes down to, you know, storytelling and finding and doing every, anything and everything possible along the assembly line mm -hmm. to make sure that I can get the stories out that I'm interested in telling. Cool. Um, tell the world about Double Seven. So Double Seven's a media marketing collective. Okay. It's uh, my company, I started it back in 2000 after I graduated NYU. Wow. All right. And uh, initially, it was a vessel to do my feature films, but as we did more and more projects, started building clientele, I just realized that the skills we had as mm -hmm. filmmakers could be applied to different clients and help them kind of get past the idea of like, I'm gonna make a video because okay. we need a video. Mm -hmm. We're gonna make something that tells a story and hopefully engages people. All right, cool. Well, just to let you guys know, just a fun fact about brother Pete over here. Pete actually directed the first Innovators of Change back in 2011, and we were just more than glad to have the Double Seven Squad um, on a team with Different Dirt to help us bring it to life. I mean, now we're in part three. Part three. You know, but I had to take over. <laughs> but I learned a lot. I learned so much. I learned so much um, from just hanging out with Pete and kind of absorbing his, him and his team's energy that, um, you know, we're able to actually, you know, direct stuff on our own. But it was oh, it was definitely a pleasure and it's always great working with you guys and seeing you guys, and, you know, working trying to do the snow, you know. <laughs> you don't stop for nothing, man. Yeah, you don't gotta, stop. You gotta get the shot. So so what's coming up next for, for, for just the Pete Chapman brand mm -hmm. and for Double Seven? So you can start with Pete Chapman first. So up next, right now, I'm working on a feature doc called Click Here. Okay. Or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love Making Movies. Hmm. And what it's all, all about right. is basically educating people on what it takes to get a project from script to screen. So whether you're clicking on it on your iPad, mm -hmm. on HBO Go, mm -hmm. or on Netflix, on your TV, or going to a movie theater, there's a whole journey for a project. Mm -hmm. And we're interviewing the gatekeepers from new media, mm -hmm. from traditional media, and then following several storytellers as they make their projects. So one of the folks that we're mm -hmm. following is, mm -hmm. of course, uh, well, me and my writing partner uh, on a heist film that we co-wrote mm -hmm. that won Tribeca All Access a few years back. And so um, as we push that project mm -hmm. forward, the byproduct of our, our experience is going to be uh, documented and shared in the documentary. Cool. And, and where is that going to live? That's going to live wherever the good people want it to live, you know? <laughs> yeah, right. it, could be, it could be something that um, ideally, you know, we're going to go the festival route with it and hopefully okay. get picked up. Mm -hmm. um, but I also have no problem just getting it out there and sharing it as an educational resource mm -hmm. for, um, you know, folks who want to get a real understanding of the mm -hmm. ecosystem of of the industry. Mm -hmm. Now, off camera, we talked about a couple of fun projects that, that you've done in the past. Could you just tell them about some of your fun projects, right. like the Porsche? Um, <laughs> yeah, so that, I mean, that's probably, I don't want to say most fun mm -hmm. as a project, but most fun week on mm -hmm. a project. Okay. How about that? Okay. Um, but yeah, I was given uh, an influencer loaner mm -hmm. uh, for of a 911 GTS 3. Nice. Um, it's $130,000 Porsche. Porsche, zero to 60 and 4.6. Mm -hmm. um, 
which is true. I found that out. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, we made a, a five uh, episode web series mm-hmm. that was called 9-11 by 7. Mm-hmm. So 9-11 and double seven. Yeah, no doubt. As we folded it into uh, our everyday life okay. as a compliment to their everyday magic hmm. uh, campaign. Great, great, great. And Queen Hussy was awesome. Queen Hussy. Is, are we picking up on season two you know of Queen what? Hussy? Hannah hit me up. I'm just trying to get some more news because y'all yeah, need that. <laughs> Hannah hit me up okay. last week, and we're going to catch up next week because she was talking about doing a season two. Okay. Yeah. So. If you guys haven't seen Queen Hussy out there, it is very, very, very funny. NSFW. And yeah. <laughs> episode one, at least. NSFW. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it, they shot it all out in Cali, which is cool, which is always great. Mm-hmm. Um, California. <laughs> but um, yeah, Queen Hussy, you guys definitely have to check that out. Um, so... Right now, we're gonna just dig into a little bit about like what Differenter is about, which you already know since you, can, you've been there like pretty much since the beginning and a strong supporter. But I want to know, in this in this line of filmmaking and making, you know, moving pictures and all that, how important do you feel is the presence of diversity in the work that you're doing? I think it's the it's the number one. It's of utmost importance, diversity, right? Mm-hmm. Like when I'm working on a project. I know that there are debates that I'm having internally or Mm -hmm. with the folks that I'm working with Mm -hmm. that other folks that perhaps aren't as diverse are not even considering, Mm. right? So when you think about like, you know, I mean, uh, in in a a romantic comedy, Mm -hmm. some people cast, you know, the light skinned girl Mm -hmm. or the love interest Mm -hmm. and it's just a, it's a knee jerk thing. Yeah. But it's, and even if it's not layered with all the Mm. other things. Like the best friend black girl. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. You want to make sure like these things aren't um, kind of uh, furthering different social uh, issues or things that can kind of be read the wrong way. Yeah. So I think that's the importance of having diverse people at the helm mm. who can control the way um, images are, are put out there. Because image, like they say, is everything. It, it's exactly. a true thing. And it, the images help people build perspective. And those perspectives, right or wrong, build philosophies around people. And um, the only way to change that is with images that debunk it. Mm. Very deep, very deep. So we've talked about the fun stuff. We've talked about what you've got coming up. Of course, the winning question, every different documentary as we start our webisode, and in this case is, what makes you different? I would say what makes me different is that when you're doing something that you're passionate about, you're doing it to the design of your internal hard drive, right? And if, mm. if you live by that, you know, 20 people could take a script. And if they live by that, you're going to have 20 different films. And so mm-hmm. what I found in myself is that I'm committed to helping tell stories that show people's pursuit of this so-called American dream. And that's something that I'm not going to stop doing. So I would say, that's what makes me different. Ah, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Just one more quick question. What advice would you give like this next generation of filmmakers, old and young, because the technology is here and cheap. So anyone, if you want to get it out, you can get it out. But some people still feel like, you know, they're closeted by, well, I don't know if I can, you know. Right. I have this conversation with my students all the time, and Mm -hmm. and there's two sides of what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. On one side, you've got people, and I've been victim of this myself, where I hold myself perhaps to a higher standard than the audience might, Mm -hmm. and that can... Uh, hamstring you from doing stuff, mm. right? Okay. So you got to know, like, sometimes you can have beta projects yeah. and then tweak them later mm-hmm. or know what needs to be dope and what can be kind of like, you know, here's something for y'all to remember me by in the meantime. But I would say to answer your direct question, anybody making a project, you know, new, seasoned, experienced or not, you got to master the craft because the technology... Um, was a barrier of entry, but that doesn't mean like if they take the swimming pool cover off the pool, you dive in if you can't swim. Mm. And so you gotta remember, you gotta educate yourself about what goes into it. Editing, filmmaking, you can't just buy a camera and scroll through and and say, oh, I can see it and it looks good and start shooting. You know, you gotta really know what goes into it from soup to nuts. Educate yourself because if you're gonna be a filmmaker, you should know what goes into everything. And then 
find the right people who have the right talent to work on your project to enhance your vision because um, you, you've got this one project that you don't think anybody wants to get on board but the reality of it is is without you they might not have anything to shoot they might not have anything to edit they might not have anything to color correct they might not have a website to make for the site um, and so it's a great time and there's a lot of opportunity but mm -hmm. you've got to treat it with a professional mm -hmm. perspective mm -hmm. and educate yourself and you know I think uh, in closing on that I think mm -hmm. It's only something like filmmaking and script writing where people think they can just hop right into. Mm -hmm. it. You know, nobody goes to uh, the to the symphony, walks home, and starts fucking playing, right? Yeah. But like for whatever reason, you know, there's vanity. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the, the images that you make kind of affirm your existence and mm -hmm. your point of view. So people are really, really gung ho to dive in. But you just got to slow up a little bit master it because that's how you end up having a career mm -hmm. and having a, a catalog that can represent your perspective exactly i mean i've always said you know collaboration is the key to cohesive thoughts you know what i mean um you know that is, <laughs> you know i drop them <laughs> but um i mean i try I tr i'm a truly i'm a truly uh, I truly believe and understand and agree with you 100 percent on that because um i think with I think the vanity part takes over the art sometimes and that's why everyone thinks they can do it yeah. and that's not necessarily the case I think you know it's like you know take a step back learn and I mean you just mentioned that project that you're working on now that you know that's an educational tool right there right. and I mean but and there's a lot others but I advise you guys to watch Pete's because Pete's dope but you know it's like take time to learn first you know crawl before you walk but everyone wants to kind of just jump in and think they're going to get a million views on YouTube yeah. which is not the case even though 24 different dirt does <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I just bought a new camera and i was at nyu for four hours going through the menu mm -hmm. with the folks who work there and then some students were hopping in and i'm not like yo you a student yeah i'm like oh, oh what'd you say you know student exactly. caught something that i was doing wrong with mm -hmm. the frame rate okay you know so wow you just gotta you can't assume that you know mm -hmm. and you gotta just uh be dedicated to the process man it's about the journey all right it's about the journey, people. You guys got you guys heard it first. Pete Chapman, Kenny Thacker, 24-7 Diffenter. And don't forget about the Jordans. You gotta get your Jordan game on. We got it. Boom. Boom. Jordan game. That's how real kings do it. <laughs> but um tune in next week for another great episode of um 24-7 Diffenter. Mr. Chapman, salute and respect. Always. All right, brother. Thank you. All right.